That's probably one of the things that stick in mind. There was a little girl sitting on the bed and she had that look of fear in her eyes. You could see it. I mean, she, she was deceased already. James R. Decky says he is still haunted by what he saw inside the home of George Banks on Schoolhouse Lane in Wilkesbury on the morning of September 25th of 1982. At the time, he was Luzerne County Chief Detective. County detectives and Wilkesbury police rushed to the scene. This after getting reports of murders inside the home. They found eight people shot to death, including five children. Banks was the father of four of those children. A bystander was also shot to death on the street. Another bystander was shot and survived. Investigators then got a call that Banks also shot and killed four people at a home in the Heather Highlands Mobile Home Park in nearby Jenkins Township. Detectives found two adults and two children. One child was George Banks' five-year-old son. In total, 13 people were killed, seven children and six adults. Five of the kids were fathered by Banks. Among the adults that were murdered, girlfriends and mothers of his children. Banks then held police at bay in a home on Monroe Street in Wilkesbury. Zardecki describes what he saw. As I got out of the car, up above the window in the porch and uh, on Monroe Street, he busted out of the window with the butt of the rifle and turned the rifle down and pointed towards us and just started screaming at us. At that time, I dove underneath the back of the car. Banks was armed with an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, this rifle. During the four-hour standoff, Zardecki says they had several chances to take a shot at Banks, but they decided not to. He explains why. If we shot and anybody shot and missed, we had a lot of dead people. He just started flying away with that AR-15 and just, by, I would have been one. He testified in court that I was in his sights at one point in time. Police convinced Banks to surrender after telling him his children were still alive and airing a fake radio news broadcast saying his kids survived the shooting. Sardecki says Banks told investigators... He didn't want his kids to grow up in this white racist world, and that was part of his whole... and he, he had his mindset. Luzerne County Detective Mike DeSoy was also one of the first officers to arrive at the home on Schoolhouse Lane. He showed us the AR-15 rifle used by Banks. It is still in the county detective evidence room. When you're holding this, what goes to your mind after all these years? The people that this gun had killed and the severity of their injuries. DeSoy says the images of that deadly day are still vivid in his memory. I can still see the baby in her in the, the mother's arms, uh, which was shot, the mother was dead, the children in that home, uh, the adults shot. Uh, it's, it's a scene that you, you never forget. Bob Kadlabowski was Wilkesbury's towing contractor back in 1982. He helped police get into the home. We talked with him near the lot where the home on Schoolhouse Lane once stood. Well, officer opened the door but could not get in because the dog was out of control. And I used to help train the canine dogs years ago. So I was able to make entry, get the dog under control, took the dog in the kitchen. Then the police were able to make entry. And then that's when they found the horrors of exactly what had happened downstairs and upstairs. Attorney Al Flora was a member of Banks' defense team. He says he first met Banks inside the Luzerne County Prison. He was the most respectful person I ever met for having killed 13 people. Highly intelligent. But the more I talked to him, the more I came to realize that uh, there was really something off in his thinking, his process. Flora and the team argued for the insanity defense. He says George Banks did not want his children to experience what he says would be an impending race war, and even insisted that the police were part of a conspiracy against him, that they shot the victims again to make the deaths look more terrible for the jury. He believed that, and this is where this was part of the insanity defense, he believed that the police shot everybody. He believed that the uh, coroner uh, covered up a lot of bullet holes with corner paste, and those holes were, were caused by police shootings. And he wanted the photographs brought into evidence to prove that, and that was his thinking. Banks was convicted of 12 counts of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. In 2010, a judge ruled that Banks was incompetent to be executed. 
and was sentenced to life in prison. And people I've spoken with over the years about the George Banks case say they believe that Banks' murderous rampage changed the Wyoming Valley forever. And in their words, they believe, in many ways, the area, the valley, lost its innocence. Reporting in Wilkes-Barre, Luzerne County, Andy Mahalshi, 2822 Eyewitness News.